Hello, it's Heather and Phil, and we are at the Georgia Aquarium. We just saw the dolphin show, which did not allow photography, but it was fun. We were on row eight, and we did get wet. So if you come to the dolphin show at the Georgia Aquarium, they will get you good and wet if you're in the first 10 rows, and if you're in the first four or five, you will be absolutely just got out of the shower. So uh, we're gonna cruise around the whole aquarium today and try to make some pictures, and later today, Heather is doing something crazy. 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 So stay tuned. Going into the tropical diver area. For this area, I put the 105 f2.8 Nikkor macro lens on and I can get right up next to the glass. You need to have the fish straight in front of you. If you're going at an angle through the glass, it kind of messes the picture up. But if the fish will swim by right in front of you, it works pretty good. Okay, here's a few photographs of fish from the tropical diver area. Heather, what kind of fish is this? This is a black bar soldier fish. Very awesome. I made all of these. Look at that ISO, 14,400. What kind of fish is this, Heather? This is a striped burfish. Awesome. ISO got a little bit lower for this one, but maybe my shutter speed was too high. Another fish that we saw at the tropical diver area is the... Lionfish. These are common in aquariums. If you see people with uh, really nice big saltwater aquariums, often they'll have one of these. And then I made some video with the Z6 of these, uh, what kind of jellies are these? These are compass jellies. Compass jellies. This jellies area of the Georgia Aquarium reminds me quite a bit of the Tennessee Aquarium here in Chattanooga, which has a large jellies area. Apparently they don't call them jellyfish anymore, just jellies. And starfish have changed their name as well. They call those, what do they call those? Sea stars. Sea stars. So we'll see some sea stars a little bit later. But uh, I really like the way these jellies look because the light on them is so bright and the background has so much contrast and there's all the tiny bubbles in the water and it's really fun to watch them swimming around in either the Georgia or Tennessee aquariums. Okay, so now we're coming into this room with a huge Great Barrier Reef tank. So the Barrier Reef tank was really difficult to get a shot in and there were some tanks after that, some small tanks with rounded fronts, and they were virtually impossible, even manually focusing. I don't know how the human eye was able to see it, but I couldn't get it with the camera at all. It was pretty to watch though. Okay, now we have entered a section called Cold Water Quest. The first area of Cold Water Quest is a tank based on California fish, and here's an example of a fish from that tank. I'm shooting Fully manual except for automatic ISO, letting the meter tell the ISO where to go. And what is this fish called, Heather? This is a Garibaldi damselfish. I thought it was really pretty. It almost reminded me of a Midas cichlid fish that I used to have in my aquarium back home. But well, you're welcome to touch their tentacles and along the side of their base. Heather was having fun touching the sea stars and other things in this touchy tank. That was pretty cool, and if Casey was there, she would have wanted to eat this one. Another tank had this sea star right on the front glass, so I made this photograph of it where you can kind of see the whole thing, and then I got a lot closer with the macro lens and made a really detailed shot of the bottom of this sea star. Here and show off. She's, a, she's our soon-to-be mother. We really enjoyed this beluga whale tank, and I'll let their volunteer handle the narration. She's due in the spring. Two males and three females. You're looking through 13 inches of acrylic, and in 800,000 gallons of 59 degree, and also divers and guests go into this habitat. In the water. A beluga's skin is a hundred times thicker than our skin and they produce blubber. The blubber could be anywhere from six to ten inches of blubber helping them keep warm. One thing that helps them keep warm, keep retain that heat, notice that their flippers are small 
Their tail fin is also smaller, and also they don't have a dorsal, a dorsal fin. They have a dorsal ridge. This helps retain heat in their body. This penguin room is cool, probably better than the one at the Tennessee Aquarium. And there's a tunnel where kids can go in there and the penguins will swim right over them, which is really neat. Okay, now we're going to go into River Scout. We just had lunch. Heather and I both had a pizza and I had a hot dog. And I've switched back to the macro lens for the River Scout area. Those are like cardinal tetras, yeah. They're like neon tetras. But... There is a cute little Amazon puffer. And Heather was working the Canon EOS M50 making video in this area and she did a great job so I just used her footage that she made. These are rainbow fish. You'll, uh, you'll find these at uh, higher quality tropical fish stores all over America. But uh, look at the great job that Heather did operating the Canon EOS M50 with its kit lens We're making this video. Here's a red-eared slider turtle. You can see these around our part of the country. And uh, Heather was doing so good, I just made a picture of her while she was working. This is an alligator snapping turtle, which Heather has named Bowser. You Nintendo people will know why she chose that name. But uh, pretty ominous. And we saw in another video of this same turtle that was put together by Animal Planet, Heather showed it to me yesterday, that they will sit there with their mouth open and their, make their tongue look like a worm and lure a fish in and then capture it with their strong jaws. Sits underwater quite a bit, even has algae growing on its back. Heather continued to make video and these fish are called discus. This is another uh, aquarium fish that you might see in uh, a nicer uh, American aquarium store. I never kept one in my aquarium when I had one because they're supposed to be a little bit more difficult to take care of and they're very expensive to purchase. But I did make some photographs of these, still using the macro lens. I finally slowed my shutter speed down to 1 125th and the ISO is under control. That one's kind of got some damaged fins and speckles on it, but aren't they beautiful? Look at all the beautiful color on the discus and I really like their eyes. This next photo is a study in depth of field. Only the eye is in focus on the entire fish. And I love how it just drifts out of focus as we move over to the right hand side of the frame. Now this picture, I probably should have switched to the 70 to 200, but I kept the macro lens on just because I was in a hurry. And what kind of otter is this, Heather? This is an Asian small clawed otter. I don't know. It looks like it has pretty big claws to me. The River Scout area was really fun. A lot of good stuff, and the macro lens was just right for it. Now we're going to go upstairs and see what Aquanaut is. The upstairs area had all sorts of Discovery Museum-like children's areas, but my favorite parts of the upstairs areas was the fact that you could look into the backstage and above tank parts of several of the tanks, including the beluga whale tank. We got to observe the beluga whales being fed and it was really fun. Heather made this video with the Canon and I made a few shots with the Nikon Z6. Here's one of the trainer putting her hand in the mouth of the beluga whale and I'm still using the 105 macro lens. That is really a great all-around lens. And here's another one. The, the beluga whale was spitting this water into the air and catching it. It did it over and over again. But by this time I decided I needed a little bit more reach so I switched to the 70 to 200 and made this shot of a beluga whale up above water. Now they, when they come out of the water like this, they're only out of the water for just a split second. So you really have to act fast. Now Heather is making a video of this Mandarin fish in a little tank that was in the same area as the place where you could observe the beluga whale tank. I mean, 10 or 15 feet apart. And then uh, further down, as you walk around the top area of the aquarium, you can look through a porthole shaped window in a door and look at the top of the Ocean Voyager exhibit. Okay, so now we are at the Ocean Voyager exhibit and you can see in that window a whale shark going by. This tank is 300 feet by, what, what do you say, 60 feet? Yeah. 
30 feet deep, has four whale sharks. One of them is 28 feet long. And what are you going to do? I'm going to swim in it. You're going to swim in it? I'm going to swim in it. You're going to swim just like skinny dipping, or what are you going to do? Snorkel. What are you going to wear? A wetsuit. Oh. Okay. Well, Heather's going to put on a wetsuit and snorkel with the whale sharks. What else is in here big? Uh, manta rays. Whoa. Okay. Awesome. The Ocean Voyager exhibit has several different areas to view, and this particular one is a tunnel that goes all the way across the center of the aquarium. Here's another place to look up at the fish through this portal. It's pretty big in size. That's a manta ray going across above you. And this is the best place to, to observe the tank. This is a 60 foot wide viewing window and there are several levels of seating uh, directly across from the glass and you can walk right up to the glass. And I misspoke earlier. I said that the largest of the four whale sharks was 28 feet. The largest is actually this female at 31 feet in length. Heather has gone back to the backstage area to get ready for her snorkel with the whale sharks in the huge tank that they have here. And she did that at 4.15. At five o'clock, I'm gonna meet at the counter and uh, I guess I get to go a little bit behind the scenes. I'm not exactly sure what I'll get to see, but I was getting kind of tired. So I came to the cafeteria area of the Georgia Aquarium and got me some coffee. And the funny thing is, I left my phone in the car accidentally, which is how I tell time. And I'm thinking, how in the world am I gonna know when it's five o'clock? Well, Heather gave me her Apple Watch, which I got her for Christmas. It's pink or rose gold, but at least I'll know what time it is. And uh, soon I'll be heading down to go backstage, I think. Here's a couple of photos that the Georgia Aquarium made of all the people that snorkeled with Heather. First they had them act normal and then they had them act goofy. We're in the tunnel now, waiting for the snorkelers to get in. There goes a whale shark. Zebra shark. Still waiting in the tunnel for our people to swim across, and whenever I'm sure it's Heather, I'll put a yellow arrow pointing to her occasionally. So there's people in the water now. If they've got flippers on, they're not our people. I see the peace sign. Okay, so here's our first indication of where Heather is. She was right behind the lead diver on the right uh, is where she stayed. And everybody made their own gesture. The girl to Heather's left made a peace sign. Heather had the kind of heavy metal rock and roll symbol is what she chose to be her symbol. And uh, there is another indication of where she is. That's Heather, right there. They had everyone do their own individual sign because it's difficult for people observing to tell who is who when everyone's wearing the exact same clothes and you're having to look through thousands and thousands of gallons of water. Yeah, yeah the, the second two. Look at the diver. There's Heather looking right at us. Got a ray coming right at him. So apparently I just found out that the photo that I posted on. That's gotta be pretty awesome. 
Next, we'll move to the large viewing window to observe them from there as they move in that direction. You can barely see her. That's her, the second one in line for the whale shark swimming right under her. That's her right there. Oh wow, it's coming right up to her right there. That's the camera person right behind her and the whale shark on the other side. Here comes another one. So Heather is five foot two inches tall and look how tiny she looks as this huge whale shark swims by. She's not even as big as its pectoral fin right there. So now that they've gone all the way across the main viewing portal, they're going to go back to the center area and swim across the tube in the middle again. Here comes a whale shark right below them. Well, look at that ray going right beside him. Did you pay attention to those 50 million small fish below you, or were you just waiting for rays and whale sharks to come? I was basically waiting on rays and whale sharks. So ignoring the 50 million fish? It's hard to ignore them when you're looking straight up at them and they're right by the glass. Heather purchased the video that the Georgia Aquarium made, and here's some footage from it. They say once you buy it, you own it, and you can do whatever you want with it. So we included the shots of her in this video. And there she is, the one on the left with the red mask. Look at those whale sharks. And there's her symbol. So we know it's her. Look at this manta ray, how much bigger it is than them. Yep. She was so excited she gave the wrong symbol. Did the water feel cold while you were swimming? Uh, not really. They keep this tank at about 76 degrees Fahrenheit, so the initial jump in was a little chilly, but once you have that wetsuit on, it holds that water against your body and it's pretty warm uh, for the rest of the swim. I'm not wet. <laughs> <laughs> That's how she's looking like. One last clip from the Canon camera below looking up. I wanted to show you the black tip shark swimming by them. Okay, so the guide says that we won't be able to see them anymore. That was pretty cool. This is upstairs over the coral reef exhibit. And this big bucket dumps every two minutes to make a wave. Very cool. So we didn't pay any extra, myself and one other friend and family person, but we got to do this behind the scenes thing that, that other people don't get to see while we were waiting on our snorkelers to change clothes and come out. It was really cool. Heather just got done snorkeling with the whale sharks. Tell us all about it. It was absolutely amazing. Um, I got within inches of whale sharks on multiple occasions. The manta rays were even like, they hung out near the top a lot more than even the whale sharks did. So um, 
I think I might have actually gotten bumped by Manta at one point, so that was awesome. Um, but absolutely, positively worth every dollar that I paid. <laughs> or my parents paid, rather. Yay! Yeah, my parents did this. Thanks, Mom and Dad. <laughs> We had to stop by the main viewing area one more time before we went home so Heather could wave bye to her friends. Well, that was awesome. Trip to the Georgia Aquarium. Somebody got to swim with the whale sharks. Somebody bought a whale shark stuffed animal. And we had a pretty good time. I'm gonna spin around and show you some of Atlanta behind us. That's the Coca-Cola place over there and that's the Georgia Aquarium and we think that that's the parking garage so come say bye Heather bye bye Ha, ha, ha.